Hello YouTube and welcome to the 14th tutorial of the After Effects tutorial series. Today we are going to uh, continue on with uh, motion blur and we are going to dig deeper into the controls of motion blur and what uh, you can achieve with it. So I'm going to go over to new composition and then select 4 seconds uh, as usual. Okay and I'm going to create a shape. Let me create a shape. Alright. And let me just add in a motion blur to it after I add in the keyframes. So I need to add in the keyframes first. Uh, I get, I seem to have two rectangular uh, shapes right here. So let me delete that. Let me drag a rectangular shape right here and make sure that the pivot point is at the center. So let me put this at the left and then let me add in the position to it. So let me just add in the position to, uh, I, I need to change the pivot point. So in order to change the pivot point, let me just select pan behind tool. Let me just drag it over here. So pivot point is something like a pinpoint uh, from which you can control the shapes. So we are going to cover up on that on for the lessons as well. Uh, but for now, let's just uh, make sure that it is in the center. Uh, and then I'm going to add in an animation just like that. Okay, so let me just add in an A's and out over that and use the graphs to make the A's and out more, se uh, more seeming. So now, I already know that uh, you can see that the A's uh, are actually there. The A's are there. So let me just make it more interesting with this. Let me click on this and add in more. So let me just go for my options right here, X, Y, Z. All right, so X position and Z position so I can uh, rearrange this to make sure that the motion uh, is uh, can be seen more. So let me get, get to an S shape right here so that now I got a whooping acceleration right there, uh, which will make the animation seem a bit more interesting. So I got this right there, okay? So now if I were to play this, you can see that there's an animation. Maybe I want more of an acceleration over there. So let me just drag it out, just like that. And drag it out, just like that. Okay, so now, okay, so I got this kind of an animation right here. A very good uh, acceleration speed, okay. So now, if I were to enable motion blur, uh, I enable motion blur with the help of this icon right here. You can see that there's nothing. If you do not have a good graphics card, then you might not see this. So uh, I suggest that you start upgrade your graphics card if you want to really get out uh, uh, like uh, the best power of After Effects. So now, uh, for the graphics card again, any Q to 700 and up series would be actually uh, preferable. So now, I'm going to uh, select the enable motion blur for all layers and you can see that the motion blur is there. So now in the beginning you can see that the motion blur is actually uh, quite small and at the end it is quite large as you can see. So let me just expand this so that you can see that. And you see that once I enable motion blur you can see, okay I disabled the motion blur and you can see that now this is just one frame. So you can see that it is cut to one frame. But as I enable the motion blur and the motion blur uh, preview, you can see that this actually expands. So this is before one frame. And here, once I enable this, it is actually multiple frames. So I can increase the number of the frames right here. So what it does is it actually adds in the frames together to seem as if it is a blur effect, a motion blur effect, which you can get out of the cameras as well. So I'm going to right click on the composition settings and then go over to the advanced tab right here where I can control this uh, motion blur even more. So now you can see the shutter angle right here. So if I were to decrease the angle, you can see that this decreases as well. So I can decrease it, maybe decrease it to a lesser number and you can see the size of this actually decreases as well. So the number of sample frames are actually decreasing once I decrease the shutter angle. So lesser the shutter angle, the less the motion blur. But if I were to whoop up the number, let's say 720, you can actually see that the sample is quite higher. So uh, 720 is actually the highest you can go, all right? So now uh, in the shutter phase portion, so if I were to set the shutter phase minus 360, you can see that this moves a bit to the left. So it takes the sample from the left side of the timeline and if I were to move it to the right 360 you can see that this actually goes further towards that side. So it is quite off of the main 
uh, main timeline cursor. So I want it somewhere around the middle so that I get the effect I want, maybe around uh, minus, uh, like this is right in front of it, so let me make sure that it is not there. So around minus 360 is what I prefer. Let me see how does that look. So I can go over here. You can see that there's a motion blur right there. But if uh, I am not uh, like uh, selecting minus 360 and 360 instead, you can see that the motion blur actually starts in a bit later. Although it can be seen later on, you might notice this um, as you get more familiar to it. Anyways, I'm going to uh, put the cursor somewhere over here so, you, so that you can see the further changes I'm going to make over to the motion blur. So let me just keep this to minus 360, just like that, so that it takes the uh, frames from the before and after the timeline cursor. So I, need, I can increase the sample frame samples per frame. So you can see that 64 samples is the highest you can go over here. And adaptive sample limit is the maximum number of limits. So it actually tries to choose the maximum number of limit. So this actually changes quite frequently according to the motion you added in over here. So now if I were to drag this down, you can actually see that a slight decrease in the quality. So if I were to decrease it even more further, like two, you can just see two frames. So it's just taking two frames, one in the front and one in the back. So that does not really give a motion effect, but you actually kind of get this kind of an effect, okay? So which quite seems cheesy and not very good in my case, but it does increase the render time. So if you have, let's say, uh, not too much time to spare, then you might want to use this. So let's say at least I want to keep it around six or seven, or but you can see that this still looks uh, quite fake. So I can increase this. The more I increase this, the more the better. So if I have 62, that's better. And the adaptive sample limit is like, uh, it cannot go be, uh, below the sample frame. This is the minimum standard I'm setting over here. So let's say if I choose 32 to 64, it will automatically select between 32 to 64 frames according to, uh, according to the motion it detects right here. So if I were to say 2 to 64, it might sometimes select 64, but not in the preview. Once you render it, you get the full idea. So anyways, I'm going to increase up the number, and I'm going to make sure for the maximum quality, I'm going to keep this at 256, which is very, very good uh, for my taste. Okay, so now, uh, now this is how you can control the motion blur. So let's say I want less motion blur, I decrease the shutter angle, and you can see that the motion blur is actually less now. So this is the maximum motion blur you have. That's uh, not always, you do not always want the maximum. So maybe reduce this down to the amount you actually prefer. So maybe just this much of a motion blur will be good. But the less the number, the sample rate are still the same. So you can see that it is quite smooth right here. So now the effect is much more around like this. So you see the motion blur over there as well. Okay, so maybe I want a bit more motion blur than this. So you can see that the motion blur is there. Let me just increase the amount of motion blur. Let's not make it 700. Let's have around 400 maybe. That's about it. So I got this kind of a motion blur. Okay, so motion blur is actually important as um, that what distinguishes um, amateuristic animation from the a professional one uh, and it makes a huge difference as you can see over here. So this is just like replicating our daily life. So I'm going to duplicate the layers as well to create an interesting effect. So let me just copy and paste this, copy and paste this, just like that. And then rearrange this to have an interesting effect. So I have an effect like this maybe. Okay, so maybe um, I should have um, Increase the timeline a bit, maybe just uh, pull this out a bit. Three, four, all right. So just pull this out. Once, you, If you actually pull this out the key, you are not affecting, really affecting the keyframe, so the visibility is actually there from the beginning. So you can see this is the effect. And that is quite useful for logo animations and so forth. So you can actually see the power of motion blur right there. 
So unfortunately, you cannot control the amount of motion blur for each of the layer, but you can pre-comp it and then control the pre-comp motion blur, and that will give you a similar effect. Okay, so this is what you have right now. So that was, this was a quick lesson, and this is how you control motion blur in After Effects. So like always, please do share, like, comment, and subscribe.